Good evening, everyone. Um, I am subbing in as your MC for Kidney Live. Um, and I am going to miss Tim, so you have to bear through me. He had other commitments, so you have to bear with me, excuse me, because um, this will be the first time that I've ever done anything like this on my own. And thankfully, we have Dr. Brontes with us. Um, I want to first of all thank you guys for joining. Uh, we really appreciate it, and these topics are so important to the community and so important to educate us. Um, we, as we've talked about before, March is a National Kidney Awareness Month, and we've had so much going on as a foundation. Last week, we had pickleball tournaments, which was an awesome turnout. And if you came out to support us, thank you very much. Um, and hopefully you came out to us and talked to us. Um, we'd love to meet the community. Um, we also have so much going on um, for the rest of the month of March. Uh, we are trying to raise money uh, for our campaign. We have a campaign this month that's called Kidney Awareness. And what this campaign is, is it's actually all funds will go to educate um, the community on kidney health and the programs um, that will assist um, assist the patients um, so I am um, I urge people to donate our we set our our funds really high where where our goal is forty two thousand dollars and as of right now we are at eight hundred and thirty two so if you can uh, find it into your heart to to donate we would greatly appreciate that we also still have a, a school competition going on for those that are um, high school and middle school age uh, you can go on to our web page uh, nm uh, www.nmkidney.org and find out more information about that as well as um, I'm very excited and passionate about a support group that we are starting next Monday again uh, the www.nm.org uh, you can go on and get all of the information on that so with that being said hello Dr. Barantes how are you <laughs> Hi, Leonda. How are you? Good, good. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us once again. We had the unique opportunity and privilege to meet with you and talk to you last Kidney Talk. So we appreciate you. We know that you're very busy and you're a family man. So thank you and your family uh, for taking time to share with us this knowledge. Uh, with that being said, I will give you the floor. Very good. Thank you, Leonda. I'm going to share my slides uh leonda are you able to see what i'm seeing now the slides yes yes sir the okay very are... good okay excellent okay so uh first of all i wanted to um thank all the um, attendees today and i wanted to talk a, a topic that um, is very dear to me uh, about prevention okay. I have to thank Mary Jo for coming up with this title. Um, she, I had, um, she had to brainstorm how to make it um, uh, appealing for for uh, for many of um, the general public to see to be interested uh, interested about this um, this topic. Uh, the next minutes, we're going to kind of learn more about how we can what we can do to prevent kidney disease and then what things we may be doing without knowing that may be causing damage to the kidneys. Uh, I am a transplant nephrologist. I work with Renal Medicine Associates and also I work for the Preventive Transplant Center as the Pancreas Transplant Director. Um, we started the foundation um, more than five years ago and we've been working on this journey uh, with passion and, and hoping to increase the awareness of kidney disease in the state. So I think the the, the, the first thing I would say is, uh, let me see what is the next thing. We're going to start with a basic question. What is the kidney made of? And, and for some of you who already know this, maybe a little bit boring, but the kidney is basically made of a bunch of very sophisticated blood vessels. and you can say the kidney is like a big colander that basically receives the blood supply, you know, when, with the, on the red pipe, it's called in an artery. And the artery, what it does is just bring all the unclean blood 
to these filtering units that are located in the in the outer part of the kidney. You see the kidney uh, and the third picture in down in the in, uh, on your left side of your screen. These are the filtering units. Uh, they are very tiny blood vessels that are very fragile. They can be uh, subject of uh, inflammation. They can be subject of changes in pressure inside the kidney, and like they can get damaged if the constant inflammation or if the constant pressure continues. Uh, so the injuries that can happen repetitively, like every day or, or frequent, will cause some scarring in these uh, filtering units. We have one million of these filtering units in each kidney. And the idea of the prevention is to ameliorate, to lower anything that can make them worse. As we get older, we lose them as part of a normal aging. So we lose anywhere between 0.5% to 1% of kidney uh, function per year after the age of 30. And when we have things like a diabetes or hypertension or have other medical conditions, that changes in normal aging kidney function gets accelerated, it, uh, it progresses faster. So very good. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I decided to use the World Kidney uh, Day recommendations, which is pretty much recommendations uh, provided by uh, 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 several national and international organizations of kidney disease and kidney professionals about how to prevent kidney disease. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you is we have to keep ourselves fit and active. There's plenty of data, there's plenty of research that shows that physical activity helps well with what we call endothelial function. So remember I talked to you about these blood vessels, these little blood vessels in the kidney? The blood vessel wall is, is made of endothelium. It's like a, it, there are special cells that line the blood vessels. So when we are physically active, we can improve the function of these lining cells of the blood vessels. So if we improve the endothelial function, we decrease inflammation, and also by keep inactive, we improve the insulin sensitivity. So all these things help us to control our weight better. It will help us to control the inflammation in our system better, and it control our blood vessel better. So this in turn will increase or will decrease kidney disease progression, will decrease cardiovascular risk, meaning heart attacks, strokes, heart failure, high blood pressure, and therefore the chance of, of, of mortality or dying. So the bottom line here, I want you to remember always, the more we sit on our desk, on our chairs or watching TV, the, the more complications we can develop in the long term because these things like endothelial dysfunction, inflammation, or insulin resistance are going to appear more, 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 more commonly. And this, was, this is nothing new. You have heard this over and over from, from, you know, from, from your doctors, from your healthcare providers. And they were even back in history, you know, the Greeks, they would talk men sana in corpore sano. This is a, a Latin uh, word for say, ment like, like a healthy mind and a, and a healthy, with a healthy body. So these are very important to, to remember that uh, they go together. There is some research that have shown specifically in kidney disease, when uh, patients are given high intensity exercise and a short and extreme, the risk of kidney disease progression goes down. So um, you know, I don't, you know, I, I don't want you to, to think that you only have to do very high intensity exercise. If you can do it, that'd be great. But if you can't do that, just the simple fact of going for a walk, so going for a little running, a little jogging, doing something to keep you moving is, is a huge investment you can do in your health. One study that um, uh, Ferranti in the University of Utah found that each 80 minutes a day of increasing sedentary activity 
was, was associated with a 20% increase in duration of chronic kidney disease, or likelihood of, of chronic kidney disease. So for example, you can see in this picture here, on the left side, it says prevalence of CKD. That's kind of the amount of people who have chronic kidney disease from 0% down to 25%. You, you see the, 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 the uh, graduation. And then on the, um, on, the, on the lower part, you see the word NVPAs, moderate or vigorous physical activity stands for. And then on the other side, you see sedentary duration. So what, is, what this graphic show us, or the, the research show us is, the more sedentary patients are, and the less moderate or vigorous physical activity they have, which is the group in the less than 0.69 and the group with more than 37.2, they have a higher prevalence, they, high, they have a higher chances of have chronic kidney disease. You see it's 22.8% uh, uh, is the prevalence of CKD, of chronic kidney disease. On the population who are more sedentary and they have less moderate to vigorous physical activity. So the bottom line is get out of your chairs, get out of your, uh, your couch and go for walks, go and do some, if you can do more intensive activity, that will help you tremendously to uh, improve many of, uh, of the risk factors. Number two, eat a healthy diet. So you have heard this over and over from many professionals. But I'm going to give you some data about kidney disease, which is the, the part that we're interested in here. Why, can, why eating a healthy diet is important? Because unfortunately, as we have evolved in uh, over the past decades, uh, we have changed over the past decades, our, habit, our dietary habits have changed. We eat more processed foods, we eat more, um, uh, we eat more fast food, so, and those type of uh, uh, nutrition are associated with different degrees of inflammation in our bodies, and that can cause increased risk of kidney disease. Uh, this study has been published in the American, one of the uh, nephrology journals, kidney journals, and they found that a healthy dietary pattern, which means eating more fruits and vegetables, more legumes, more nuts, whole grains, fish, and low fat diary with less red meat, less sodium, less processed meat, and less sugar sweetened beverages. So that's called a healthy dietary pattern. Was associated to uh, an improvement or a lower chances to develop kidney disease by 29%. So people who, who follow this sort of healthy dietary pattern, they have less chances to develop chronic kidney disease, and they have less chances to have protein in the urine. You may have heard the word protein in the urine. Protein in the urine is not a good thing to have. It's always a bad thing to have. So by eating more of these fruits, vegetables, more, more of this unprocessed food is, is going to be very important to, to decrease the risk of chronic kidney disease. And this study has been done in a very large amount of people. You have here 630,000 people were, were followed in different uh, studies, found about for a meeting of 10 years. So these are very, there's the studies that have followed patients for a longer time and they have seen the effects. So again, it's very important that you, you make some investments. You know, sometimes um, we can't fix things with pills, with medications. We know we need to make change sometimes um, of your diet. You know, if we don't change our diet, that, that, that's one of the, the main problems. I always remember when I was in med school, one of my older physicians uh, would tell the patients, you know, he was maybe his uh, late 70s, early 80s, I did my med school in Peru, and he would tell the first things to his patients uh, when they would ask the patients what vitamins should I take. You know, he would say, take a vitamin O, 
but in Spanish all means olla, so but meaning food. So you, so if you if you have a better diet, you can potentially improve many chronic conditions. Uh, the risk of developing, or if you if you already have it, the risk of progression. One of the things that are very important that we don't realize is amount of sodium. You know, sodium of Western diet you know, uh, and, and American diet in general falls in the category of Western diet is very high in salt. You know, most of uh, most of us, you know, by eating Western diet can have four, five, six, eight grams of, of sodium per day, and that's a lot. That's that increases the risk of high blood pressure heart failure, stroke, kidney disease. And unfortunately, about 70 or 80% of the sodium comes with the food that we eat, you know, with the processed food that we eat. And only 10 to 20% comes with a salt shaker. So it's very important to learn to read food labels. It's very important to, to see, to make sure you're aware of things like a bacon, and ham are packed with salt. So things like a pickles, pickled vegetables, they, they have a lot of salt. So you, a ketchup has a lot of salt, mustard. So barbecue sauces, so uh, ranch uh, sauces, all these processed uh, sauces, they have a lot of salt. So you need to be careful the amount that you consume. You, you can have them, but just in less frequency and just look at the food labels and just have, be more mindful about, about the sodium content. Re, uh, restaurant, you know, before you go into a restaurant, just do some research about where you're going to dine out and, and, and make sure, see if they can accommodate some of your, some of your uh, requirements. Um, it, it, it's very important for you to, to pay attention to, to, this, to, those, um, to the salt content and the food that is already prepared. One of the things that are taking more and more um, uh, news in the in 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 the medical field and also in the in, in the lay press is about the advanced glycosylation end products. It's called AGE. So you know the the advanced glycosylation products. Those are modern diets. You know, uh, they, they they have a lot of this uh, this product. And what are what are these components? These components are when fat and protein combines with sugar in the bloodstream. So, foods like uh, for example, like a fast food, they have a lot of these components. And when they get to the bloodstream, especially in somebody who is diabetic, for example, those the fat molecules and the protein molecules combined with the sugar molecules and they do some cross-link reactions and those type of reaction contribute to generate an inflammation and and the stress in our in a, it's called oxidative stress and inflammation in our bodies this inflammation increases atherosclerosis insulin resistance obesity renal disease gingivitis so many things that we know about are, are, are linked with this type of um, a compounds called AGE. So in general, diets that are rich in fat and, and, and meat and red meat are very likely to contribute to AGE. That's one of the mechanisms that we're seeing that why the fast food and generally processed food uh, are, are, are increasing cardiovascular risk factors. So what we can do about it, what we can do. So first I think is just decrease, decreasing the amount of processed food. Uh, second is when many of these, uh, these diets are heat processed, meaning the food has to be exposed to high heat and that mechanism generates in part this AGE. So um, using high moisture cooking techniques, I have shown that you can lower the amount of AGEs, like a poaching, simmering, boiling, bracing, stewing. 
So this type of uh, cooking, you may use as an alternative to the regular, to, re to the regular um, pan frying uh, or, or the barbecuing because when there's a lot of heat that can uh, to decrease the amount of the um, AGEs. Decreasing grill, fry, or roasted food uh, is important. It's one of the ways to do that too. Uh, marinated meat and fish in a low pH solution before cooking is another way also to, to decrease these AGEs. Um, this is a, a, a research, this area is an evolving research, uh, and, and I think we're going to learn more and more as the time goes by. So we talk about the importance of being active. We talk about the importance of our diet. Now, the other point is control your blood sugars. About half of people who have diabetes don't know it basically because they haven't been to a doctor or perhaps they haven't checked the blood sugars. And as we get older, especially middle age and above, there are very high possibilities that we can develop diabetes with time. And, and, and as previous, we, we have this talk before, and diabetes can affect the kidney in several ways. One of the ways that it causes is, you know, um, in the picture A, this is a normal filtering unit uh, graph, um, and then on the on the B uh, part is a diabetic kidney. You see these cells called mesangial cells. They are much more of these are um, purplish looking cells. They are they proliferate more. There is this. Um, a, green uh, structure that you see surrounding the endothelium uh, is called glomerular base membrane. It becomes much thicker and that causes the protein area, the protein in the urine and damage of the kidney in the long term. So controlling and knowing, first, I think first of all, knowing about whether you have diabetes or not and controlling is crucial to control kidney. Is, is, is so important. You know, you're going to spend, you're going to save a lot of money in the long term, and you're going to save a lot of headaches by just being diligent and knowing about your blood sugars and controlling your blood sugars if you are diabetic. And there are plenty of medication now available to control the diabetes. You know, and the, most of them are very successful, and it's a matter of working or working with your primary care doctor or working with your uh, with your providers. Blood pressure. Blood pressure is called the silent killer. So half of adults who have, who have high blood pressure don't know it. And that's the problem because high blood pressure will not tell you that you it, it won't it won't give you a warning unless the the damage is too advanced. You know, um, you may have heard that people say sometimes, I know my blood pressure is high because I have a headache or I, because of maybe I feel different. That's too late. You don't want to wait until that stage for you to know that your blood pressure is high. The normal blood pressure is about 120 over 80. And there is plenty of now of ways to know what is your blood pressure. You can get a blood pressure monitor, which is not too expensive. You know, anywhere between 20 to $40, you can get in any of the grocery stores. You, the, sometimes some of the grocery stores, they have blood pressure um, uh, machines that you can measure your blood pressure. So you need to be proactive. You need to know what is your blood pressure and the blood pressure changes with time as we get older the blood pressure gets higher and higher because our blood vessels become stiffer. And as, 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 as we become older, the hypertension risk goes higher. It's very important to, to look at those, you know, and, and uh, checking blood pressure once every three months, or once every six months, even if you don't have it, it's a good thing. If you know it, if you have high blood pressure, act on it. Don't be complacent. If you have high blood, high blood pressure, strive to get a blood pressure close to 120 over 80. A blood pressure that is higher than a number for the most part is going to be detrimental or, or, or damaging in the long term. High blood pressure is a, is a slowly, slowly damaged kidneys, 
heart, brain, peripheral, peripheral blood vessels, and it's a very expensive disease, very expensive disease when it causes end organ damage. It's very cheap to treat it, but, uh, but uh, and there are plenty of ways to treat it. There are plenty of ways. This is another example how the blood pressure damages the kidneys. Uh, it causes what we call fibrosis in the kidney. It causes some cyst proliferation. It, uh, there is uh, sodium retention. Um, it, it raises blood pressure. And, and the unit that we talk about, the glomerular, it becomes shrunk, it becomes kind of smaller, and that's called glomerular ischemia. So hypertension, the kidney, unfortunately, is one of the organs that get, get uh, affected greatly by hypertension. And it won't tell you anything. It won't tell you anything until things are very advanced. So we talk about um, how fit we need to be. We talk about diet. We talk about uh, blood glucose monitoring or check knowing about if you have diabetes or not. We talk about if, knowing if you have high blood pressure or not. How about fluid intake? And that's a question that I get asked very often. What is, how much, does, does, does drinking water prevent you from having kidney disease? And the jury is out there. So the, the, the answer to this question is it depends. It depends. Uh, uh, some research have shown that drinking water alone does not prevent to have kidney disease. But we cannot extrapolate to this to every circumstances. You know, drinking anywhere between 60 to 80 ounces a day in a, in a medium normal climate, I think is appropriate. Obviously the, the, the um, recommendations are going to change from condition to condition over patient to patient. Drinking water has shown to prevent kidney stone disease. That's, that's, a, very, uh, that's a very well known fact. But in general, by drinking water alone, you're not going to prevent kidney disease. Uh, you know, the more water you drink, you're not going to prevent kidney disease uh, progression. So drinking water uh, in moderation is what is needed. Smoking. Smoking is one of the biggest things that uh, we, need, we can intervene. Uh, fortunately, smoking is becoming less and less common in the U.S. And I think, I think worldwide, although we have seen a spike on e-cigarettes, especially among the young population, uh, but smoking can cause damage through, in the kidneys through different ways. It's exposed to heavy metals. By causing, by smoking, you're inhaling some chemical that causes vasoconstriction, what means is the blood vessel becomes more narrow, and that can cause you know, hypoxia, meaning low oxygen in the kidney, intrarenal vasoconstriction, which means the blood vessels in the kidneys are very narrow, high blood pressure, it increases the, uh, the chances of having small blood clots or small um, 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 clotting disorders in the kidneys, Remember, we talk about the, the oxidation, the inflammation, that also can cause, and also um, all these can cause vascular damage, more pressure in the filtering units, and eventually will lead to progression of the chronic kidney disease. Smoking also raises risk of, of kin, uh, uh, kidney cancer, bladder cancer. So when possible, do not start smoking and if you smoke, do your best to quit smoking. You know? Kidney disease is one of the other reasons why you need to stop uh, stop smoking. How about second hand? How second hand smoking and kidney disease? You know, there is a study that have have assessed this, and, uh, and this study shows the risk factor of developing chronic kidney disease. Now, you have here the three pictures of of of, um, of a person here. He said no smoke exposure, less than three days per week smoke exposure, and more than three days per week smoke exposure. And then you have you have in the lower part is prevalent CKD, meaning people who have already chronic kidney disease. 
So if you don't smoke, the risk is kind of uh, is, is equal, no, no, no risk. If, if you are exposed three times, a, three days a week, you, the risk goes up by 65%. More than three days per week is about 38%. On new people who develop chronic kidney disease, again, the risk is more than half. Either you're exposed to less than three days a week or more than three days a week. So if you are at home, you know, if you have your child, your kid, your kids, or your family members, if you smoke, I think one of the ways to prevent them from, from having kidney disease in the long term is just to smoke outside if you don't want to quit smoking. So secondhand smoking is associated with development of kidney disease. Um, and, it's, and this was demonstrated in a, in a Korean population study. Drugs. Unfortunately, drugs is a problem in our state and we have to be real about it. Drugs does increase risk of kidney disease. You know, this is a study that was published not too long ago and it shows here that uh, you can see on the pictures the hard illicit drug use, you know, you can you know, cocaine, heroin, meth, all the things. Your risk of kidney disease uh, progression progression is about 30% extra and increase the mortality is about 40%. So the chance of dying is 40% extra and the chances of developing chronic kidney disease is about 30% more. This was part of the Creek study. The Creek study is, is, a, is a large study that follows patients for several years and they generate a lot of data that is important for us to understand. So tobacco is not a good thing. Drugs are not a good thing. So if you know people who do that, educate them, educate them. The education is very important. There are some uh, community resources for uh, tobacco and also drug cessation. Get them involved because, um, because the kidney disease uh, developing is quite high, the risk. One of the things that we forget and we talk about is the NSAIDs. You know, NSAIDs are all this, it stands for non-anti-inflammatory uh, medications. They are used very frequently for uh, muscle aches, joint pain, joint swelling, headaches, colds, and ibuprofen, Motrin, Aleve, Advil, are on that category, naproxen, all, all, all those Korean sets. And all these medications are very painful on the, on the, on the grocery stores. You know, you, you see them, you go, you get them, and then they are not, you know, they are not prescribed medication. Anybody can access to them. So NSAIDs and kidneys are a problem because NSAIDs can cause changes in the blood supply to the kidney, that's called hemodynamic disturbance. You know, the blood supply that feeds the kidney, the little blood vessel, it can get too narrow down and that can affect the kidney, causing acute kidney injury. The prolonged exposure of NSAIDs can cause some institution, we call institutional nephritis. It's like a reaction, in the, it's like a, like a, imagine you have a, like a rash, like, like an inflammation going on in the kidney when you use for a longer time. So in general, people who use NSAID for a longer time are more likely to have kidney problems. And especially this comes with when we are getting, when we get after the middle age, you know, when we are 40 and above, 50 and above, we, you can develop hypertension, we take medication for hypertension, and then you add the NSAIDs. So that sometimes that potentiates the risk of kidney failure or kidney disease or sometimes can undo the effect of the antihypertensive drug. The NSAIDs also raises the blood pressure. It retains more salt and water. So when possible, do not take NSAIDs regularly. Occasionally, if you have clear by the dog, but if you, if, if you have no medical conditions at all and you are above middle age, you can take occasionally. But if you do have some medical conditions like the heart disease, kidney disease, you may want to check with your doctors first um, because taking kidney uh, NSAIDs can, can, can change things around. Get your kidney function checked. It's very important, you know, go to your primary care doctors, go to your um, 
healthcare providers, whoever you, you, you follow, if you don't have one, get one. If you are above 30 or 40 years old, get one because it's so important to understand where the kidneys are, where your diabetes risk is, what is your proper pressure is doing. So especially if you have diabetes, hypertension, obesity, or family history of kidney disease, you must have your kidney check. Remember, kidney disease is silent. It won't tell you anything until it, until maybe you can function a drop less than 25, 30% or 20%. Remember the, the, the fact of diabetes, hypertension, obesity, family history, kidney disease. I think I have, that's all I have for today. Uh, I want to thank to the to Leonda, to team. Uh, we're working very hard to get the foundation moving ahead. Um, we have different uh, events, as Leonda pointed out. Um, we are um, uh, we have some um, a foundation target goal uh, for fundraising to support the foundation and please uh, help us to to keep the foundation live in the community. We have a middle and high school competition and that is, to, is trying to uh, award uh, some uh, um, uh, some technology um, um, advanced that they're going, to, they're going we're, we're going to evaluate this technology uh, application they're going to uh, uh, generate for for us to use as, as education tools um, um, Leonda, thank you for everything, and yes. I, I will stop sharing my presentation. For no, now. all right. Well, thank you once again, Dr. Brentis. You are amazing, and you gave an awesome presentation. We do have um, a question, if we could ask that of you right now. Um, we have a question coming in from Patrick. He wanted to know, in your presentation, you talked about um, lowering or, or not eating red meats, correct? Um, he was wondering if these, um, oh, can you not hear me? Can you hear me now? No. Uh, now it's better. Yeah. Is it better? Okay. I'm sorry. Um, he wanted to know, Patrick would like to know if wild game at like elk, deer, uh, you know, at being New Mexico, we get to, to I, produce our own lean meat. Would this follow under the red meat guidelines of trying to stay away from? That's a very good question. You know, and I don't think I have enough data to answer his question. So I would say I will limit the amount. That would be the first uh, advice. Number two is perhaps avoiding it, uh, avoiding cooking the meat with a high heat or, um, methods that we talk about to decrease the amount of the AGEs, uh, um, chemicals. All right, let's see. Can if, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you just perfect. All right, well, let's see if any okay. more questions okay. come in. I, I think, I think that, that will be the main intervention. You know? okay. I, I, think, I think it's much better than the regular processed meat, you know, the processed food that you, you find in the grocery store. Right. Uh, but I don't have enough data to tell him how better it is. But I think okay. if, if if we cut frequency and amount and perhaps modify the way it's cooked, okay. I think uh, the risk could be ameliorated. Okay, perfect. Well, I really appreciated um, the points that you were saying that it's not the intensity of the of the movement, but just getting up and moving. Um, I think if people are like me, when you say you got to exercise, it doesn't necessarily. I think of joining a gym. It doesn't necessarily mean joining a gym. Like I appreciated that in your um, presentation. Um, it could simply be parking at the other end of the parking lot and walking into Walmart or Target. Just those little little uh, movements can really, really stack up. And uh, I really appreciated what you pointed out. And we talk about this at the Kidney Foundation, early prevention. So many people do not know what 
they have and it they could um, if they were to see their doctor if they could educate themselves on what to look for with kidney disease with diabetes with high blood pressure um, even you know heart disease so much could be prevented and I think that's what I I really love about the uh, the organization um, is we really uh, want to educate people for this kidney uh, prevention, kidney disease prevention. So um, I just would like to encourage anyone, we couldn't do this without the support of the community, without the donations of the community. So please join, uh, look at our website. We have all of our information. Um, as Dr. Baranta said, we have a really neat competition going on for the young people. Uh, it's uh, for technology, TikTok, poster boards, Facebooks, uh, for them to let us know about the kidney health and what we can do uh, for kidney health so we can, we can use it for, um, for our own advertisements. And then um, we do um, have a wonderful group coming uh, on on this Monday um, and it's going to be a support group the first kind in New Mexico based a foundation based so we ask that you go on to our website or our Facebook and and um, and if you find it in your heart please support us through donation and we thank you Dr. Brontis very much and um, I'm going to say good night unless we have any more. Uh, Barbara said um, it was interesting and informative. Thank you, Barbara, very much. And um, we will talk to everyone next month again. The first Monday, the first Wednesday of every month, excuse me, at six o'clock, will be our next kidney talk live event. And be looking on our our website to find out what we're going to, to be speaking about. So thank you, Dr. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. All right, people. So I'm going to end this. Thank you again. Have a wonderful evening.